Buenos días, Puerto Rico. Welcome to the kingdom of God on earth. Bienvenido al reino de Dios aquí en la tierra. All the Puerto Ricans that have come to celebrate the kingdom of God. Todos los puertorriqueños que han venido a celebrar el reino de Dios. I want you to remember that God has created one wonderful race called the human race. Quiero que sepan que Dios ha creado una humanidad preciosa que es la raza humana. We just have the privilege today to be able to invoke the name of the Lord for every denomination and for every person. Pero tenemos el privilegio hoy de invocar el nombre del Señor para toda denominación, toda raza y toda religión. And we're invoking it from Puerto Rico to New York. Y la estamos invocando desde Puerto Rico a Nueva York. I'm from Manatee, no? just in case. Él es de Manatee. Just in case. I'm New York Rican. Yeah, I found my I found my, my queen. I came all the way from Puerto Rico to find her here. Él vino desde Puerto Rico a encontrar su reina. But I, I want you to know how wonderful it is to be able to know that us Puerto Ricans been here for a very long time. Quiero que sepan que nosotros los puertorriqueños hemos estado aquí por un largo tiempo. And we have been chosen by our creator. Y hemos sido escogidos por nuestro creador. Para hacer lo que nosotros estamos haciendo ahora. To do what we're doing right now. Hablar en español y en inglés. <laughs> speak in English and speak in Spanish. <laughs> por si acaso, por si acaso Dios no entiende en inglés. Just in case God doesn't understand English. Oramos en español. We will pray in Spanish. Y si no entienden español, and if you don't understand Spanish, oramos en inglés. We'll pray in English. Y porque Dios nos enseñó a orar a través del pueblo judío. Because God taught us to pray through the Jewish nation. Y nos enseñó a nosotros a ser cristianos que creemos en un rey. And he taught us to be Christians that believe in one king. Y que oremos por la gobernadora. And that we pray for our governor. Para que Dios la pueda bendecir. So that the Lord could bless her. Con la sabiduría del cielo. With the knowledge that comes from above. Que no tiene religión. That has no religion. Ni tampoco tiene raza. And it has no race. Solamente tiene una raza humana. But it only has one human race. Y son todos puertorriqueños. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all Puerto Ricans. Con esto le dejo estas últimas palabras. And with this, I leave you this. With this, I leave you these last words. En un tiempo de violencia. During a time that we're living in a violence. Que no sabemos qué hacer. That we don't know what to do many times. Nuestros líderes políticos. Our political leaders. Están luchando. They are fighting. Para ver cómo nosotros podemos cambiar la criminalidad. Y la violencia. To see how we can make a change in this in this violence. No se le hace fácil. It's not easy. Pero le voy a decir una cosa. But I'll tell you one thing. Es un espíritu maligno. It is a malignant spirit. Que toca todo el mundo. That touches every single person. Solamente sale con la mano de Dios. And it only comes out with the hand of le God. Le podemos tirar, tirar todo el dinero que queramos. We can throw every money at it that we want. Y toda la educación que queramos. And all the education. Pero en el nombre de Jesucristo. But in the name of Jesus Christ. Reprendo todo espíritu de violencia. We rebuke every spirit of violence. Que toca los hogares. That touches the homes. Que rompe las comunidades. That breaks that destroys our communities. Y oramos para que el conocimiento espiritual and we pray that the knowledge se una of God a la sabiduría humana will unite with the human para knowledge poder hacer el cambio que necesitamos en nuestro país. so that it could create the change that we need in our country. Que Dios bendiga a cada uno de nuestros líderes políticos. May God bless all our politicians and political leaders. Que Dios los ha llamado that God has called them para ayudar a la comunidad. to help the community Sin excepción de personas. without exceptions of any que la person. Paz de nuestro Señor Jesucristo May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ esté con cada uno de nosotros. will be with each and every one of us. In the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, en el dulce nombre de nuestro we Salvador, pray this prayer. Oramos esta oración. Peace comes to Puerto Rico. La paz viene a Puerto Rico. May peace come to Jerusalem. Que la paz sea sobre Jerusalén. May peace come to the world. Y que la paz sea sobre el mundo name, entero en el nombre de we Jesús. We pray. Oramos. Amen. Amen. God bless. Amen. Viva Puerto Rico. Viva, viva. Viva Manatí.
Please join me in welcoming to the stage to sing the American Puerto Rican National Hymn, the president of the Latino Courts Officer Society, Jessica Hernandez. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and rockets reclaimed the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the Donde he nacido yo es un jardín florido de mágico primor, un cielo siempre nítido le sirve de dosel y dan arrullos placidos las olas a sus pies cuando a sus playas llegó Colón exclamó lleno de admiración oh 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 esta es la linda tierra que busco yo es Borinquen la hija la hija del mar y el sol de Sol, del mar y el sol, del mar y el sol, del mar y el sol. ¡Que viva Puerto Rico! ¡Huepa! Please join me in welcoming to the podium New York State Secretary of State Robert Rodriguez. Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias, mi gente. I'm Secretary of State Robert Rodriguez, and it's a great honor. Thank you. Gracias a ustedes. To be welcoming back the National Puerto Rican Day Parade after two years two years of hiatus due to COVID-19 pandemic. So we're here to celebrate the Puerto Rican culture. We know that New York is the home to over a million Puerto Ricans, the largest community outside of Puerto Rico. We are not giving up the throne to Orlando yet, pa que lo sepa. <laughs> but we also know that we are vital contributors to the New York economy, that we are supporting New York and the United States as citizens from the economy to sports to arts to healthcare and much more. So today 
will be marching together on Fifth Avenue with Governor Hochul and Lieutenant Governor Delgado and many of the um, representatives of New York State government. Now, I have a small list, and you will get the full list in the video that I will be queuing up, but I will mention a few. Budget Director Robert Mojica is with us. Julissa Gutierrez, our Chief Diversity Officer. Mm -hmm. Congress Member Richie Torres. Congress Member Nidia Velasquez. Our CUNY Chancellor, Felo Matos Rodriguez. But today is really about great festivities. This is the connection between the island of Puerto Rico and New York. And this connection is extraordinarily strong. One that we have seen jump into effect when it comes to reconstructions after the Hurricane Maria, to the point where we're talking about trade with Empire State Development and, and the communities that we support both here in New York and Puerto Rico. We have connections to Manatí, we have connections to Ponce, we have connections to Vieques, Yabocoa, Toa Baja, and the list goes on and on. But more importantly, no one has and realizes that connection between New York and Puerto Rico more than Governor Hochul. She had been there many times to ensure that the reconstruction is happening, offered resources from the state, whether we're talking about trade or energy and the transformation of solar. So let's hear a round of applause for Governor Hochul for the work that she has done recognizing the Puerto Rican community. But we're gonna talk about celebrating because we're celebrating our accomplishments here in the United States and that connection to Puerto Rico. So, vamos a decir, que bonita bandera, que viva Puerto Rico. And let's cue up the video. New York State is home to over one million Puerto Ricans. The largest community outside of Puerto Rico. Our culture is deeply ingrained in the history and growth of New York. From significant contributions of Puerto Ricans in government, art, film, theater, and los logros históricos en educación, medicine, science, sports, and of course, music. Y frente a grandes desafíos, New Yorkers and Puerto Ricans have proven to be resilient and steadfast in their commitment to each other. When Hurricane Maria devastated the island, New Yorkers were there for our family, friends, and vecinos in Puerto Rico. New York State has remained committed to helping the island rebuild and build back stronger than ever before. De hecho, New York launched a partnership to expand Puerto Rico's solar workforce to support the development of that industry on the island and boost green energy. We've learned the hard way that we need to be prepared for unprecedented circumstances. And that includes access to mental health services. That's why New York created a partnership with CUNY, SUNY, and the University of Puerto Rico, which will provide training and field experience to graduate students. Juntos. We will prepare the next generation of disaster mental health professionals across New York and Puerto Rico. The National Puerto Rican Day Parade es la celebración cultural más grande del país. Estamos orgullosos de ser puertorriqueños en Nueva York. We are proud to be Puerto Rican in New York. Estamos orgullosos de nuestros padres, abuelos, and all of the struggles that brought us here today as we serve New Yorkers. El vínculo entre Puerto Rico y Nueva York nunca se romperá. We are familia. We are familia. Somos familia. We are familia. Somos familia. We are familia. Somos uno. So, with no further ado, let me bring to the stage a great friend of Puerto Rico, our great governor, Governor Kathy Hochul. Gracias, gracias. Buen día. Good morning. Thank you for the warm welcome, but with Puerto Rico involved, how can it not be warm? It's always warm in Puerto Rico. I want to thank, first of all, there are people who reminded us of God in our presence. I thought that was almost a comedy team, Bishop Nancy and Angela Rosario. I want to thank you for reminding us of the presence of God in our lives and our commitment to each other and our moral obligation to try to seek pause, to try to find peace in a turbulent world today. So thank you for your beautiful words and reflections. Uh, Jessica Hernandez, that had to be the most beautiful rendition of both anthems I have ever heard. Um, 
The passion in your voice was just extraordinary, and I thank you for sharing your talents with us here today. And uh, when I asked Robert Rodriguez to be the Secretary of State, I think he thought, that sounds great. I'll be traveling around the globe. I'll be going to Europe and to China. And a Secretary of State goes all over. No, you're going to Oswego and Jamestown and Watertown and uh, Far Reach and NASA. You're going all over, but I, he has been a great ambassador for me, and I am so proud of what he has done. Uh, I thank you, and also we have incredible, I have a credible partner. You need to get to know him very well if you don't. Uh, that is an extraordinary individual who spent Quite a bit of time playing basketball in Puerto Rico, and that is my Lieutenant Governor, Antonio Delgado. Please stand up, Antonio. Please. I also spent a little time in Congress and uh, developed a deep relationship with uh, one of our great leaders, a champion for Puerto Rico in every sense of the word, whatever their needs are. You have a voice in Nidia Velasquez. I want to thank her, Congresswoman. and the energy of Congressman Richie Torres. Uh, they, he is boundless. He is so deeply passionate about the needs of his people. It's extraordinary. I'll be mentioning in a couple of minutes something that we're working on together. We are also fortunate to have the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Rafael Hernandez, is here from Puerto Rico. Thank you for joining us here as well. As well as the President of the Senate of Puerto Rico, Jose Luis Domo is here. Domo is here as well. Let's see, I don't see him. And you saw the opportunity to meet, if you don't know them already, the incredible dream team I have in state government. Uh, some have experience from the past, some are new to the mission, but if they could all stand up, every member of my administration who are here this morning, please rise and take a round of applause. Thank you. And one more person that I probably see less of than all of you, and that'd be my husband, Bill. But he, is, he, he has been at my side since we were interns in the New York State Assembly office in Buffalo, a uh, life partner for uh, married 38 years. But uh, he lifts me up every single day. Let's give a round of applause to New York's first first gentleman. And I really like the shirt, honey. It fits you well. <laughs> sure. <laughs> So, somos uno, yes we are one, and we celebrate and make up for the lost experience of not being able to march down the Fifth Avenue and showing our solidarity and our pride and our joy at having such an incredible connection to the people, our hermosas and hermosas in Puerto Rico. And I thank you all for holding together this organization through the tough times of virtual parades and everything else we managed, uh, but here we are in person. And a little bit of rain is not going to stop off. It's good for the crops back home, right? It's all right. We're OK with some rain. And to have the 65th parade uh, just about to step off in a few moments is, is quite extraordinary. And I'm really, really proud to be part of this. My connection to Puerto Rico goes back further than most of you would think, because I come from a family of individuals who left great poverty. My grandparents left a, a very small little island very green Ireland, not a very warm island, known as Ireland. And they found their way to a place called Lackawanna, New York. Why Lackawanna, New York? It's a gritty steel town. The pollution filled the skies, the water was contaminated, uh, but the homes were inexpensive. You could live in a trailer park like my parents did and not have to spend a lot of money, but the basic word was steel. People came there for the jobs in steel, as did thousands and thousands of Puerto Ricans in search of the middle class dream that you could find working with your hands, building the steel that graces our skyscrapers today. So I, as a child, had a connection to this community because my grandfather, my father worked among them and my parents were social justice Catholics. They didn't have much, but they always knew there were people who needed more. And many people came from Puerto Rico to this part of our state to not just work in the steel plants, but also to work in the fields, uh, there's a lot of agriculture, corn, strawberries, lettuce. So people came to be part of this economy. My mother and father, working with a Puerto Rican priest who relocated to this area, 
realized that there were children who didn't have parents to be with them during the summertime. So we literally started a day camp. It wasn't beautiful. It was in the basement of a rundown building, and the steel plant was right there. But we gathered, and we brought together the resources and the people to give these young children whose parents knew New English, but this was the next generation, that we invest in them and show them the love of a community, they could rise up and become the business leaders, the individuals who are leading, the elected officials. And I'm proud to say a woman I literally months, a month ago made the first Latina court of claims judge from that area, Betty Calvo Torrey. So we lift people up. We lift people up. We all start in the same place, but my job is governor. And I believe this to my core, because those values I was taught as a child are with me every single day. It is our moral responsibility to help the children of God wherever they are. And this community has been so strong and so vibrant, but sometimes Mother Nature knocks our beloved island back a little bit. And we've had to endure earthquake after earthquake. And then upon that, after the rebuilding is going on, to have an earthquake. Uh, Rosado, Rosado and I were literally there uh, trying to lift people up from the hurricanes and the earthquakes and to figure out a new way to reimagine power on this island so it's no longer being battered and battered and people are left without power and literally left in darkness for weeks and weeks and weeks without refrigerated food. It was devastating what this, the communities throughout Puerto Rico went through. But if we figured out if we can use the technology that we're working on here in New York State and bring in the smartest and best people from SUNY and CUNY, and I thank our chancellor for helping lead this, we can help the island become energy resilient as well. That's how we empower people. We train the people there. The people are still investing. And I know many people have come here and live here. And forget about Orlando. I mean, really, you want that for your governor? I just want to get that out there. <laughs> just couldn't help it, couldn't help it. Come to New York, we'll celebrate you, we honor you, but also let's not abandon the island. The island is where our grandparents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, we will never abandon the work we started there. And I want to reaffirm that commitment. I'm reaffirming that commitment here today, that whatever the needs are, and I'll continue to work with Nidia Velasquez and Richie Torres and our other leaders to identify the challenges and make sure we help, because this is part of our familia. And one thing we're going to work on with Congressman Torres, and we're working with the government of Puerto Rico, we understand that in 2017 there was a government resources office. I mean, there's a lot of do government documents that are shared. And it shut down. Don't know why but it's been closed for a long time. And literally, uh, people have had to struggle. They shouldn't have to travel hundreds of miles to go back and forth to get records they need for schools and jobs and other activities. So why is it such a hassle? Why isn't that in New York State again? Well, Congressman Richie Torres recognized this, and I want to thank him for working toward a solution. We are working together with Governor Pierluisi, and uh, we're going to be announcing something very soon on that. So we're going to work on that. We've got some more announcements coming. Thank you. And I'll close with this. New York would not be New York if it wasn't for the courageous individuals who left the security and knowledge of their home and traveled here in search of what they thought was the American dream. I say the Puerto Ricans who found their way to this community have now created what we call the New York dream. The New York dream is even better. It celebrates diversity. It understands when there's language barriers, we break them down. When there's education barriers, we break them down. When there's job school barriers, we break them down. We solve problems together. And I am so proud to be governor of a state with the largest, let's keep it the largest, Puerto Rican population in the nation, because that is who we are, because we are Somos Uno. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the parade. Look forward to seeing everybody out there. Please welcome to the stage Representative Richie Torres. Buenos dias. First, I want to thank Governor Hochul 
just for the extraordinary support that you've shown for the people of Puerto Rico. And I will say that Governor Hochul's New York is way better than Ron DeSantis's Florida any day of the week. And that New York, New York is definitively the second home of Puerto Ricanos. And as the governor noted, I'm partnering with the governor to establish an office for the government of Puerto Rico here in New York State. So if you are a New Yorker who was born on the island, once the office opens, you will have the ability to access your vital documents here in New York State. The, the Puerto Rico Federal Affairs Administration, PREFA, had an office uh, that was closed back in 2007 amid the financial crisis. And now it's long overdue that we reopen it. Um, you know, the United States Congress is considering a number of bills that will affect the future of the island. And one of those bills for which I'm the lead sponsor would speed up the elimination of the Financial Control Board, La Junta. You know, the United States has a long tradition of colonizing Puerto Rico. And La Junta represents American colonialism at its worst. And the time has come to send the Financial Control Board into retirement, which is exactly where it belongs. Right, the people of Puerto Rico should be governed by their own elected representatives, not by a colonial financial control board. Now, the only reason I'm here is I'm the warm-up act. Uh, so I have the honor of, you know, we, I'm a young congressman and we stand on the shoulders of giants. And when it comes to fighting for Puerto Rico, uh, the United States Congress has no greater giant, has no greater fighter uh, than my colleague, the first Puerto Ricana in the United States Congress, Nidia Velasquez. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage Representative Nidia Velasquez. Good morning, everyone. We're back. Yeah. Governor, thank you so much, not only for showing the undeniable bond that exists between Puerto Rico and New York, but for being there, assisting relief efforts in Puerto Rico, and your commitment uh, to continue to play an important role in the rebuilding of Puerto Rico. And to all my colleagues, um, it's always great to be with you and around you, and particularly on the issue of Puerto Rico to know that there are unfinished business. Yes, there is a junta, but we have to also remember that Puerto Rico faced a bankruptcy and didn't have the right to file for bankruptcy, that it was the law, PROMESA, that provided a vehicle for Puerto Rico to be able to pay for having the lights on, to pay teachers, to keep El Centro Medico de Rio Piedras open. But La Junta is another issue. And so, yes, I agree with you. I co-sponsor your legislation about eliminating the Junta. The issue is that we have provided the federal government money to rebuild Puerto Rico. And now we have to make sure that the money is used to make Puerto Rico resilient. <laughs> and to make sure that the money is spent for what it was intended. Fossil fuel companies Get out of the way in Puerto Rico. And when we look at everything that goes on between 
bankruptcy, financial crisis, the lack of parity when it comes to federal funding for Puerto Rico, it is clear that once and for all, Congress have the moral obligation to end the colonial situation in Puerto Rico, and that every elected official, whether he is a state executive or a member of Congress, we all have a responsibility to demand from the federal government to put an end. This is 2022, and the United States government has subjects. That is wrong, and we are working to build a consensus bill that will provide a vehicle that is democratic, that is transparency, that is transparent, and that is inclusive, so that once and for all, we end the political limbo of Puerto Rico. Yeah. And for any elected official going forward, whether he's a member of Congress, governor from Florida to New York, <laughs> Illinois, Ohio, Pennsylvania, all the battleground states, we have large concentrations of Puerto Ricans. So if we show that we are investing in making sure that Puerto Rico is provided with every tool so that their children can dream big and, and have the opportunity to make a decision whether to stay or leave Puerto Rico, but it should be a decision for the people of Puerto Rico to make, not because they are forced to leave, whether it's natural disaster of the lack of job opportunities in Puerto Rico. And if you ignore so, you'll do so on your own peril. So, Governor, the Puerto Rican community here, uh, we have a million strong, it is true, I think that in Florida right now it's 1.2, and we are telling the Puerto Rican community in Orlando, we are here, we welcome you, we embrace you because we treat you with respect. And that is what you have shown throughout your administration. While Puerto Ricans and Latinos and the people of New York were going through so much hardship throughout the pandemic, if there was a time to show that the federal government is, must be there at times of natural disaster or national crisis, was during the pandemic. We passed legislation to provide trillions of dollars for small businesses to assist state government. But if you don't have the leadership in the state government, that will make sure that those programs that have been designed by Congress and implemented by the state, and that is what happened under your leadership. You expedited in such an effective way the relief of that money so that it assisted people where they were suffering. Thank you for listening to us and being a partner in making sure that once again we show how governments should work, especially that bond between the federal and the state government. You have shown extraordinary leadership. Thank you very much. And so, hey, Boricua, <laughs> hoy vamos a ropar la quinta avenida con la bandera puertorriqueña. This is. You know, in Puerto Rico, there was a time when you, if you carry the Puerto Rican flag, you were arrested. And when I came to New York for the first time to study at New York University, and I came to the first Puerto Rican Day Parade, oh my Lord, I was shaking to see that many flags. You don't see that in any other place, not even in Puerto Rico, only after Maria. After Maria, the Puerto Rican people found themselves. They, they believe in their inner strength and show that even at times of pain, 
realizing that the federal government, Donald Trump, wasn't there to assist and to fulfill the most basic responsibility, and that is to be there when people are suffering. And people in Puerto Rico, with carrying their Puerto Rican flag, got into the streets, took care of everyone and their neighbors, and that is who we are. We are Puerto Ricans. God bless you. And please welcome to the stage, to close to this morning's program, the Lieutenant Governor, Antonio Delgado. Buenos dias. It's good to be here. I'm not going to keep you long. This is a lot of energy, a lot of excitement. Governor Hochul, thank you for the opportunity uh, to be able to serve alongside you uh, to the legend, Nidia Velasquez. She was my chairwoman on the Small Business Committee, and you looked out for me. You looked out for me. I love you. I love you. Richie Torres, my friend, uh, it's always uh, an honor to serve with you as well. Uh, the governor mentioned that I did spend some time in Puerto Rico uh, at Acebo. Uh, I played. Anybody from Medicibo in here? Okay, I see you. I see you. All right. Uh, my sophomore year uh, in college, that summer, I got to play uh, in the professional league uh, and spent about two months um, on the island, and it was uh, incredible. Uh, incredible. My mother actually ended up having open heart surgery uh, that same summer, uh, which cut short my trip. Uh, but the memories uh, that I have stay with me to this day. Uh, I'm just proud uh, to be here with you all today. Uh, know that I uh, am someone who's tried in every capacity of service to bring people together. Uh, that's what I try to do, and I do it with love. I do it with love, I do it with compassion, I do it with respect, I do it with decency, I do it with integrity, and I do it with character. It's how I was raised in upstate in Schenectady, uh, and all along my path, uh, I've tried to bring those values to bear. Uh, I'm so excited to be able to lead with Governor Hochul at this moment. We need it. We need to love now, more than ever. And I know everybody in this room knows how to love. A lot of hate out there, a lot of violence, but always remember this. No one's born hating. No one is born to hate anybody for the color of their skin, their religion, their sexual orientation, their gender. No one's born to hate. We have to be taught that. Taught. And so leadership matters. Our community matters. Our parents, our teachers, they all matter. Everything we do, day in and day out, matters, and how we celebrate what we celebrate matters. And today is about celebrating culture, celebrating diversity, celebrating all that New York has to offer, all that Puerto Rico has to offer. Embrace that. Embrace the power of that. We need that now more than ever. Love is natural. You know it right away from the moment you take your first breath. So I'm excited to be with you. My first Puerto Rican Day Parade in New York City. And I can promise you this, it won't be my last. So I love you. God bless you.